Hello, everybody, and welcome to week number six of the Pre-Modern Showdown Series 5. I'm Michael Hoyp. I'm joined today by Tom Matelski. How's it going, Tom? It's going good. How are you? I am doing good. Yeah, we have a little bit of a late start, uh, thanks to my schedule, so appreciate everyone being flexible. But uh, we have our first match between Will Hurst and Rich Shea, and uh, it's uh, going to be a match of magic, I guess. That's that's technically start, uh, where we'll start. Uh, I'll bring up the decks, and I'll if, if anyone's confused, it'll make a little bit sense as we go here. Uh, so... The three decks that Will has brought to this tournament is Fluctuator, Sly, and Stasis, while Rich has Red Green Goblins, Parfait Oath, and Blue White Stifle Knot. And uh, for the this the the sixth week, the players their their decks are kind of like predetermined because they've played their other two. Will is playing his Fluctuator deck, and it's unfortunate for him that it is lined up against Rich Shea's Blue White Stifle Knot, uh, which is not the matchup the Fluctuator deck wants to see, uh, is to say the least. So. <laughs> um, it, it's unfortunate for Will. This is the second time he's played the Fluctuator. Second time he's playing against a Stifle Knot variant, and uh, his matchup's not very good, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, yeah. Uh, so let's quick like take a look at the lists, and we can kind of talk about maybe why this matchup is something that Will is so unexcited to see. But uh, first, we have the Fluctuator list. And this is a combo deck. Uh, it's going to start off by putting Fluctuator into play. That's going to make so all your cycling cards cost two less. All but like five or six cards, six or seven cards cycle. You'll be able to find a Songs of the Dam, uh, add a bunch of mana, and then kill your opponent with Drain Life. Uh, the problem is, is you're very focused on doing that one thing. And if your opponent can interact with it in any meaningful way, uh, things get a little bit trickier. And uh, Tom, I'll bring up the blue white stifle knot list. Do you want to talk about what this deck does, and then maybe specifically how all these cards in the blue white stifle knot list line up against the fluctuator? All right, how long do I have? I I, I mean, we're we're not <laughs> expecting this match to go very long, so maybe uh, maybe you could fill in some time by uh, the pregame. Yeah. Uh, so. Um, I want to, so I, real quick, I want to be optimistic for Will. I think that there is a chance he can pull this out. It's going to be very difficult. This is going to be one of the most lopsided matches in like all of Magic. Like, this is actually <laughs> crazy. Um, but it's interesting to see. I think, I don't know, I, I had this weird feeling all day that we could see Fluctuator pull this out. Um, it's all anecdotal where there's no, you know, I have no data or evidence for this, but I just have a feeling something's going to happen. Okay. Um, but from the Dreadnought side, um, Rich can, he doesn't really have to like play fast. Like it seems that he only needs one counter spell, either days, foil or counter spell. Like, he just needs a counter spell just in case, uh, with the main deck meddling mages naming, um, well, I guess it depends, right? You can name fluctuator, uh, or, um, the wind con i'm drawing a blank right Dra now. i think it's drain life is the, the version that, yep. yeah so i mean either one um rich being on the play is going to be huge uh will needs to win that die roll but it's gonna be an uphill climb um the only good news though i'll make it real quick is i think there's a lot of air like swords and uh stifle stuff like that so um but there's also a lot of gas. So. Yeah, there's some pro problematic cards that like Will can't do much about. So I know. I'm sorry. I'm really trying to be optimistic, you know, for Will in this case. But I think he needs to be. He gotta, you know. I guess I will. I will caveat the saying that like this is talking about the game one that like without access right. to cyborg. That I think this game plan is very. This game is gonna be very straightforward. Uh, there's there's not gonna be much. Will it Will does not have a lot of agency in what's gonna happen. Um, so. No. Yeah, I'm looking forward to us talking post board because, like, a card misdirection, which is there's four. That's a big card here. Okay. Um, so it's, it's basically the fluctuator's force of will. So I'm looking forward to the post board game. But hey, Mike, you never know. Okay. Uh, so yeah, and and as you had mentioned, that Rich had won the die roll. So, uh, as if things weren't hard enough for Will, uh, it, it, they're going to be harder. So, uh, let's jump down to the match. If you want to let our players know that they can begin. Yep. Uh, we'll we'll get this one started and we'll see how long it takes. All right. 
So. So this should be. This should be a long match, everybody. So get comfortable. <laughs> yeah. All right, Rich starts with Portant. The thing is, too, with this, you know, knowing what your opponent's going to be on, which is Fluctuator, Rich can keep a, like, a marginal hand because there's so many cards that are... He knows which cards are, like, really important in this match. Exactly. Like, like... Yes. So he can keep this, like, marginal hand, like, let's just say he has a Dreadnought, Maybe even no counterspell with the port, and he could probably just keep it because he's gonna find a counterspell. I mean, the ability to just cast meddling mage on turn two is is enough against Will. I think game one. Yep, <laughs> like, this might be it. Oh, yep, there it is. Like I, Will is like now. Will's plan is if if fluctuator or drain life or songs of the dam. Like pretty much if any of those are named, um, I don't know strategically which is the best to name, but uh, any of those, I think cause real problems to will will's typing on his keyboard he's probably typing in an sos that's <laughs> i think that's what it is uh he named okay rich named fluctuator fluctuator okay i think that's game though i'm looking at his list right now well i mean i think like now it is like will can cast his very very like, unimpressive I, creatures i was gonna say you start uh attack oh no <laughs> there's an atog no All right, did Will go to discard? <laughs> did. That's interesting. Because I know, um, I wonder if Will just mulligans, for, like, not even to find the fluctuator. You could, but you might, like, at least want two lands because you're anticipating the meddling mage and you want to play some four mana one ones or whatever that's going on. A four mana two three? A pendril, dra <laughs> a pendril drake does line up pretty well against to block a meddling mage. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That's true. But uh, the problem is, is, once Rich summons a twelve twelve, then your two three looks a little bit silly. Yeah, I mean, do you understand? Like, would you agree with the Mulligan situation? Like, do you just Mulligan for at least like t at least two lands because you're going to be playing that game where you got to cast some creatures? Yeah, I mean, like, I have to assume that Will has. I mean, I don't uh, that he has a fluctuator in hand, and that's usually like step one of the the game ones for the fluctuator. Uh, you have a lot of lands, and I mean, uh, is it? Is it 20 or is it 24? I don't know how many lands that Will actually has, but I mean, maybe you take a risk, but it it might be like as sad as it seems, like Will might just be like, it doesn't matter. And he's just fine with whatever. Like, I gotta hope that Rich doesn't have Meddling Mage. I gotta hope that Rich doesn't have a, a quick Dreadnought. Like, a lot of things have to go Will's way for him to win game one, I think. Especially since this match is like no, since they know what they're playing. Like Rich is right. not gonna like Rich's deck is so good in this matchup game one. Like he's not gonna keep a hand that like doesn't do something against Will. And with Rich being on the play, I just don't think Will can really do anything. Yeah, that makes sense. And then second middle mage just need the drain life here, right? So we understand the Atog reference. <clears throat> so you have to read the flavor text on Fluctuator. I'll read oh. it real quick. FICO. Summoned only Atog for three straight sessions. The tutor couldn't decide whether to punish his failure or praise his consistency. Oh. That, I, just next leveling. I did not realize that there was a reference to Atogs on Fluctuator. I wonder Maybe if that, that makes Rich like the Fluctuator deck more than, than other pre modern decks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that, name, that one named Songs. Okay. Oh, okay, that actually makes sense. Uh,. I don't know what the life totals are actually, but I, I don't think it matters in this game. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Uh, yep. So Will's deck is like basically down to just like a bunch of like overcosted creatures, uh, and uh, well, let's get to see cloud of fairies. All right. That one doesn't line up very well. Uh, it really needs to be a 2-3. <laughs> uh, Actually, in, in pre I don't think so. In pre-mod, there's no giant growth effects that can cycle, right? 
Uh, primal boost. Well, that one costs green though, but that one's that one's from onslaught. I mean, technically has oh, so yes, cycling, but like not for like two that you're talking about. Okay, but. actually, you can name any card problem. Like, what the hell is that? <laughs> um, I'm pretty good with the pre-modern card pool, but there's some random stuff. And, like, I have no idea what that is. I I cannot think of an Urza's. That seems like something that they might just put on a like on a cycling two, but I can't think mm -hmm. of one. So, well, we'll probably be hoping that he has one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Actually, you know, no, they wouldn't. I don't think any of the cycling cards did something while you cycled besides like Tusker and stuff, right? Like the swamp cycling ones. And yeah. The, so the in Urza's block, they were just cycling. They were all cycling too in Urza's block. Uh, but in Onslaught, they changed the costs and then they also had like effects that. Uh, Got it. Okay. When you cycled stuff. Yeah. I mean, I guess like from Will's perspective, him playing a Sandbar Merf Merfolk and a Cloud of Fairies is at least holding off these. Medley mages, and now he does summon a two three flyer. That's true. I mean, so Rich has was that two impulses. So if he did impulse and just put you know dreadnoughts to the bottom, which I don't think is the case because Rich has got to expect two. He's got to start putting blockers into play, so you need at least one dreadnought. Um, this game's going up. Oh, yep. See, All right. <laughs> Rich can just sandbag one until he actually has to play it. He didn't really need to. Yeah, with the medley mages in play, like. Will can't. It doesn't really threaten that or anything other than like casting these like really dirtily creatures, and so he has like a ton of time to assemble a dreadnought with a bunch of counter magic if he needs to. If he's afraid of, I don't know what he would be afraid of, but <laughs> yeah. Do you know the name of that card? Uh, what's the card? It's another two three flyer, but oh, it's wait, that one, I know. yeah, it's, it's keen, that's keen eye keen eye even yeah. raven even. Haven. I think I know all the ones in the Fluctuator deck, even though there's not really a reason to name know the creature's names. <laughs> Alright, the 12 12 comes over. I don't know what the conversation is here. I don't I Will might actually be below okay, he's he's probably at twelve or lower. But uh And uh, Dreadnought attacks, I'll just put Will at three. I think it's about right. I mean, Medley Mage, I think, got him for six. Do you know what, what creature was just cycled? That is... Uh, is it Primok? Primok Escapee? Yes, yes. This one I thought about a little bit, like... Just making like a bad reanimator deck that you just like have this and exhume. You're like, and a turn, but then you just like play a bunch of counter magic. So, like, when you're not doing your thing, you're just it's like a weird mix between reanimator and psychotog, but like mm. you're just like a blue black control deck, and then you just like cycle this guy and then exhume it. I don't know if that would ever work, <laughs> but I've thought about it. I've never put anything to paper. <laughs> yeah, I've seen, um, I can't remember who was running it, but I've seen some people running like the land cycler creatures for two and like. I guess trying to reanimate them. The only problem is cycling for two is a lot like so like the legacy deck now that's got the cycling guy for one. Mm -hmm. um, there's a huge difference between one and two. I don't think it's playable at two mana. But, so we see uh, Will packs it in, move to game, two, game two. I think this is where we can definitely see some more of a game here. All right, let's jump over to the sideboards and we can discuss how things change. So I'll bring up the fluctuator list. So the cards of the sideboard are one extra copy of Songs in the Dam. That's typically against, I think, like decks that have more counter magic. Uh, Lotus Petal is when you need to race. And there's a copy of Clear, a copy of Gilded Light, four copies of Miscalculation, four copies of Misdirection, two Twilight's Call, and one Expunge. Uh, so I don't actually know how many of these cards come in, in this matchup. Are you, are you, because if you, you kind of have to go on the Twilight's Call plan, right? If you're bringing in all these counter magic, because like, you can't just be on the base plan because there's just too many stops in your deck. Is that right? So, so the, it seems like it. Yeah. So we're like, we're transforming into like a bad living end deck per se. We're cycling some creatures and then. 
eventually trying to resolve a song of the dam to cast a twilight skull which brings all creatures back from the graveyard and if you pay extra mana it co- it's you can play it as an instant uh and so the the blue cards that come in like the miscalculations in the misdirection at least give will a little bit of interaction with what rich is trying to do whether it's will can prevent a, a dreadnought from coming down early or if the game goes long and and rich is not applying any pressure then uh, will can kind of protect his combo and per se like he's casting songs of the dam it gets counterspelled you can either misdirection it or miscalc if the the man is right so uh so a new a new game plan for will Uh, it's certainly i think better than what he was trying to do before um and uh oh I, i guess there were copies of expunge in the main so in theory uh will had an out to kill those meddling mages but uh (laughs) Let's... Was it three mana to like right into days? Like I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he had four <laughs> mana. He, he got his pendulum drake into play. So, all right, true. true. I'll bring uh, Rich's list up. So two annuls, two swords of postures, three blue elemental blast, one hydro blast, two brain freeze, two disenchant, two last breath, and a deep analysis. So we already like his deck in game one. Art does he need any of the tools from his sideboard? Like does anything is anything like a big upgrade? I don't No, I, I I just don't think Rich needs to do anything. The only thing he could possibly do would be he can just cut swords and bring in two annuls. I just I, a null might be better than swords. Okay. So when when um Will is on the sideboard plan, does he still leave the fluctuators in or does he take them out? Oh, good call, right? Because you're just changing game plans here. Yeah, I mean, like it will. You'll be able to like turbo a little bit if you have the fluctuators in, but um, I I don't know. I don't know what the game plan is. Is if you board any of them out, or all of them out, or none of them out? Do we need we need the master here? Yeah. First point. He. I mean, he wrote an article. <laughs> it's probably explained. I guess I'm just showing that I haven't oh, read yeah. it. So. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I mean, like, I don't think he needs fluctuators. It, I mean, it'd be nice to ha- it'd be nice to have, but like, um, you need a density of of creatures too, and you're bringing in a lot of cards. So I don't know. No, I think you're right. I don't I actually. I don't think fluctuator is the way you can go in this matchup. I still don't know if Rich wants to keep in the swords. I, I mean, what's the other cards? You, like, I don't know. I just don't see what. Like, you're gonna start swords in this guy if he gets ahead. Like, is he gonna get ahead on board? I don't think so. Like, you just gotta counter the uh, Twilight's call, right? Um, yeah, I also don't see how this deck consistently can like cast the Twilight's Call and then counter with miscalculation. I don't see how that's going to actually happen. All I can say is when I was at LobsterCon, some of the times I walked by Flint and games were very long and he had many, many manas in play. So uh, okay. it, it seems weird like, like how long the games went. I mean, I'll I'll say that I don't think Flint's opponents that I had seen were playing Dreadnought, so I think that changes things. He, um, I believe he dodged it the entire time. Yeah, but I was saying, like, the, the matches I watched, it's not like he was playing against a deck that can summon a 12-12 and just kill you. Uh, so the, exactly. the games, naturally, probably are likely to have a little bit longer. Um, but, it, yeah, I was surprised on how often Flint could go into to the longer games. Uh, we got a message from chat that said, According to Flint, this is how you cyborg for this match. As fluctuator out two expunge out one gilded light out four smoldering crater two drifting gin and you bring in lotus petal miscalc and misdirection so split would still leave in the fluctuators so i guess you just kind of just have a lot of cards that you i mean i guess every turn that you draw you're drawing a card that likely can cycle so uh if while you're not trying to turbo out a fluctuator uh, you're still probably able to like go through a lot of your deck. Yeah, I, I don't know why you'd want to cut Expunge. I mean, obviously Expunge does not hit the Dreadnoughts, but um, I guess if you're... I guess it depends on whether your opponent... I will say, I, when I think Flint built it, I don't think he expected his opponents to like properly name a meddling mage on like Twilight's Call or something. I guess he could name songs of the dam, but like he, when he made this, maybe he was expecting like people to 
it was one people didn't know what the de was the deck was doing. All right, Will's kick things off with a remote Damn. aisle. The smoldering crater has has been played, so not not a direct copy of Flint Cyber Plan, I guess. I guess I I think functionally though, like the white the or like the white or the green one is the same as the red, right? There's there's no cards that cost anything other than blue or black and white. I guess the white there is like gilded light. Um so the but is there any there's no green mana in Will's deck, right? I don't think so. Okay. Um So we'll have to ask why Will, if he maybe he boarded out the slippery karst instead of the smoldering crater. That was the sideboard <laughs> choice he had to make. <laughs> so the game's going quite slow. Does that change anything? Like I mean Will's Will's casting a four mana two three. Um I don't think so. Rich impulse and respect. I don't. Th I mean, it's hard to tell if it's in response or end of turn. I still don't even think you daze it though. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just daze the spells that actually matter. Because um, honestly, if you're on the staple on that side, you like that's why I was thinking about you board out the swords. Like, their creatures actually don't mean anything. You just, I think, Rich mainly just has to look for a dreadnought. Like game two and three, it's just like you maybe want the game to go faster. All right, Rich has cast Opt two impulses and now a Portent, so he's going through going through his deck. He's shuffling though, uh, so didn't like what he saw off the Portent. Interesting. It's yeah, it's it could be one of the hands where um, Rich has the Dreadnought. He's just looking for the second piece, um, but you would assume one to two counters. All right, Medley Mage has come down. Um, uh, I mean, if you're from Rich, are you naming Fluctuator? Are you naming Songs of the Dam? Are you naming Twilight? Twilight's Call, or are you? I guess Drain Life would be the other option. Ah, uh, that's a good question. I, I, I guess you could also name misdirection. I think is yeah. I was, that was my. I would. I would name misdirection because then you don't have to worry about anything really. Like you just now your counter spells are free again. I might name songs of the damn. I get. I mean, well, it, it really depends on Rich's hand. If he has multiple counter spells, it probably doesn't matter. Okay. But if he do, if he doesn't, I think you have to name um, misdirection. I'd probably with open deck list though. I'd probably name misdirection because then you just turn off. Completely, how Will's going to interact, like, and then he can play like again open deck list. Rich can play around the miscalculation. Mm -hmm. um, so if you just name the misdirection, you don't have to worry about it. All right, Will has summoned. Another keen eye. Yeah. But that has meta oh, counter spell. Okay. <laughs> who who really won that exchange? Uh they didn't. <laughs> oh, okay. Hold on. <clears throat> Alright. Rich is back to game plan or his what his deck normally does, and that's summoning a twelve twelve. Uh and at this point. I mean, Will has no interactions with the Resolve Dreadnought. Is that correct? Because it was expunge, clear. Oh, he's, he's casting a Primok Escape. Uh, interesting. I wonder if Rich boarded out Daze on the draw. I think this matchup we definitely don't. Daze is like this is the this is the matchup Daze lives for. Yeah, all the tap lands and right, like just. Out temple your opponent and then you know go to bed very happy. Well, Will's gonna go to eight. Uh, 
I mean, if he is able to summon... Oh, no, never mind. My math is wrong. I was going to say another Primak escape heap, but that that does not... 4 plus 4 plus 2 does not help. No. Um... Interesting. So oh. he's got another blocker that doesn't make him... Well, doesn't you know, allow him to just die. That is the Veiled Serpent. Is that, is that this one? Or is it Slinking Serpent? What is it? Come That's on. Help me out. Help me out, Tom. Uh, is it pen, is, is, are they Pendrels? Is it like Pendrel? Are they all like that? Uh, is it Pendrel Serpent? Veiled is a different card. Okay. You think it's Pendrel Serpent? I think it's Pendrel Serpent and Pendrel Drake. Uh. Is it? I don't think it is. Uh, let me find my deck lists. Uh, sandbar Serpent. That's it. Alright, as I'm frantically trying to find the name of Sandbar Serpent. Um, Alright, he, he's going for the expunge. So this has I, to, this has to target the meddling mage because it legally can't target the mm, the dreadnought, which is unfortunate. That is unfortunate. <laughs> so I don't even know if Rich minds. Depends what he names it. We don't know what he named. I think the fluctuator, since that's the what he used before. Uh, he put the atog on it, so. All right, so Will's going to put Rich to six. Maybe he has a Songs of the Dam and a Drain Life. <laughs> oh, it's never mind, not six, it's seven. Cloud of that Fairies. Is. Storms one. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Will, you got to cycle that Cloud of Fairies, right? He's going to block with the Cloud of Fairies, so he only takes 11. Block. And he's still dead. Well, yep, that's it. And Rich is going to plop down a handful of blue counter magic. He brought in the Indulge, which I guess you, it's just safer to do so, because again, Swords is horrible. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I mean, the games, I will say, were longer than I expected, but the results were not any different than, than we anticipated. Uh, so let's, let's jump down to the players and listen in to what they have to say. Uh, about this match, and then just in general. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's unmute these guys. Hey. Uh, Hello. Well, I managed to get there. Yeah. I know everyone was saying that it would be difficult. But... Against all odds, Rich, you're able to win. Uh, <laughs> you know, very fortunate that my draws came together. Um... No, I'm, I'm kidding. If I could pick any deck for me and any deck for William, it would have been better. Yeah, this is uh, definitely not the matchup you want to see. I mean, there are so many problematic cards that, Rich, if you had just have in your opening hand, that it's almost like Will can't do anything. So, Right, right, yeah. This is, I think, about as lopsided as a pre-modern match gets. Yeah, so game one, there's almost no chance for you, Will. Like, is... <laughs> does the the sideboard does that like provide any like are, rich are you are you worried at all in the sideboard games or is it um yeah i i was because i thought that expunge could kill dreadnoughts but apparently not so okay. no. <laughs> no, it does not. Um, i mean no. so he brings in he, he has miscalculation mm -hmm. which means that he can try to go off with four mana but by then i'm almost certain to have a double counter and then he can have uh misdirection which is fine but Misdirection is limited and doesn't stop the annul that I'm bringing in. Nor does it stop meddling mage. And so once I've halted the combo plan, he can try to be an aggro deck. But, you know, both 12s are very good at being aggro. <laughs> yeah, uh, the aggro with that summoning, like, the 4-mana 2-3 flyers and the 7-mana 4-4 four, four flyers. But, but there's, like, 8 4-mana 2-3 flyers. That's true. Uh, 
Yeah, there's eight of them. You can't forget that. <laughs> I'll say the, the two three flyer does line up pretty well against the meddling mage, but <laughs> absolutely does. Yeah, yeah. After the meddling mage has got in for a few damage, two three arrives, lights out for meddling mage. Uh, yeah. So. Uh... Yeah, a tough matchup. I mean, I th I think Lanny and Mike were, I don't know, Will, if you listened to their podcast, but they kind of talked about, oh, like, obviously it was very unfortunate that you have this deck up against another Dreadnought variant, but they kind of looked back and there wasn't really an opportune time these last three weeks for you, Will, to use your Fluctuator deck. So, uh, um, I mean, there was, and I, yeah, I listened to them and they're actually 100% right, like, I should have used it week one of this series. Um, that was just cold feet. Okay. Uh, I'd probably... So, the thought with Fluctuator, honestly, is I didn't have a lot of reps within it. If I saw a great time to use it, great. But I was hoping to use it in a way which they actually described was uh, it scares people to, into doing certain things, right? Like they can't line up certain decks against me because they're afraid of it. Mm-hmm. So what I was counting on was similar to week one was, you know, go 2-1 or section one. I go 2-1. Cool. I'm okay with that. Uh, the hope was for this section to go like 1-2 or 2-1 to be at least even or above par. And obviously luck, skill, playing didn't quite line up that way. So it bit me in the butt, which is perfectly fine. Um, I've learned a lot uh, from this, from picking this. Um so the the best time was to use it uh, week one of this section. Uh, and as far as this matchup goes, I mean, Rich is playing a great game. I'm eating chicken wings off to the side here and drinking vodka cranberries in front of me. Like, I, I, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, game game two, like, I just thought, I like I sideboarded out my fluctuator, my drink. I sideboarded on all the combo pieces. Really? Okay. And I was just going aggro. Like, I started yeah. the expunge. I hope you don't find your damn <laughs> Dreadnought, which he almost didn't do game two. And I'm just going to beat down because my creatures actually beat your meddling mage. They do beat my meddling mage. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that was my plan. And game two, it kind of worked. That's just a full uh, draft. Yeah. Turn yeah. four, two, three flyer. Hope we get there. You yeah. know, we're building up to our four, four flyer. For a four four flyer or hot whatever haughty gin is or whatever the stupid gin is. Drifting. I don't know. Yeah. Um it's it's a horrible matchup. Um so the best bet is here I go two four, hope breakers go my way, and even though I love Jared, just hope I beat Jared's butt and somehow make it in on breakers. That's yeah, this well, where I'm at. Next week is gonna be really exciting. We'll have our choice of decks. My match against Lanny is gonna be I, I think it's gonna be an awesome match. That's probably the match to watch next week, honestly. We'll see how it all turns out, but, you know, I think it's awesome. Um, this match, nothing unexpected happened. What, what are you going to do? I we guess that's true. And did you explain to chat why I took a pile of 200 ATOGs to mark my meddling mage? Uh, um, the the reference to the flavor text of Fluctuator, that was the reason, yes. right? Okay, yep, yep. So. Okay, good. He, he chickened out. He didn't put the pile of Atogs game two. <laughs> Said it was too much work. Like he was doing it's a lot of work. What work were you doing in this matchup, Rich? You played your cards and then you won. <laughs> I guess I didn't realize it was a, a big stack. I just thought it was like a, it looked like an Atog and a top loader to me. But no, no. The, the, by the second time, it was just an Atog artist proof. I oh, okay, okay. I, I had already put my two hundred Atogs away, and it, you start tapping a meddling mage that has two hundred Atogs on top of him. It is not an easy job, okay. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll go to that. I'm tired. I am, I am doing my best, William. I'm not fueled by all these chicken wings. I don't have a vodka. <laughs> well, you have. You I'm just doing my best. You could have said something. I would have sent him to you. Yeah, yeah. Now you tell me. I, I thought you knew. I thought we were friends. Wait, yeah, you're you're gonna send him you're gonna send him chicken wings in the mail through through the through the <laughs> screen, star tracking, whatever. Saw that that on Willy Wonka. That's how. It works. Yeah, there it is. Is that what they call it? Smell of no, it's in Smell Vision or what the hell was their TV thing? I don't know. Anyway, um, let's 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 not take up any more time with this dreadful match. If there is nothing to learn here, at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's, all right, fair enough. I don't know. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's been a great time, and looking forward to uh, next week and 
you know, seeing how we end up. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Have a great night. Bye, right. everybody. Yep. Okay. So we'll we'll let uh, Will and Rich go. Tom, you're going to be playing in our next round, and uh, I'll bring that up. You're going to be up against Alvaro, and then we're going to have Mike Arnold jumping in the booth. So we're going to get things ready for uh, round number two, and we'll take a quick break as we get things set up, but we will be right back.